Rub up your engines! Well, check it out. Toyota's first electric pickup truck prototype is on the road and rolling around. Now, Toyota revealed this in Thailand. Thailand is where they build a lot of Toyotas. First three months of this year, Thailand was 80% of the electric vehicles sold in Asia. So they're trying out, it looks like a Toyota Hilux that's been electrified, an electric pickup, because they're also big on pickups in Thailand too. Local engineers are testing this electric Toyota pickup in Thailand, and certain select customers, ones that like probably lease volumes of electric trucks, they were allowed to test them out. Now this is in Thailand, but Toyota Australia said they would like to have them imported to Australia too. And they're real work trucks. They're single cab with an extended bed. So they got a lot of room. That's what people want there for carrying stuff around. So here comes up with an electric pickup. I'm sure they'll do a lot better job than Ford did with their Lightning F-150 electric pickup, right? Now it's not out yet. These are prototypes that you're testing out, but you can see Toyota's going slow and steady like the proverbial tortoise in the race, right? And they're not jumping down head first in the shallow end where they're going to bonk their heads with electric vehicles. They're taking their time, and if they do become popular, I'm sure Toyota will do it right. Well, I don't say I don't warn people about electric cars and fires. 1,500 cars were totally destroyed in an airport parking lot in Luton in England. They say there's not a single one of them that's really salvageable. Heat goes up, flames go up. When the cars start on fire, fluids start leaking, they're burning. They'll go down by gravity. Every single one of these 1,500 cars was destroyed. And like I warned about electric cars, people were not parked next to the electric car, right? But 1,500 of them went down because it just got burning and burning. That's the problem with car parks. If you are out in the open on flat ground in the cheap parking, in the economy parking, right? You're just out in the open. They're only going to be able to start a fire of a certain area, right? But when you're in a car park, the heat rises right? And there's cars above you because it's multi-story. And as fluids start on fire, they're going to go by gravity right down every single lane, and they burnt every stinking car down. 1,500 of them. So, you know, somebody like me would be screwed. I don't buy full coverage for my cars. They're too old. They're 20 years old, 30 years old, right? So, if mine was burnt down, I'd be screwed because I don't have fire insurance for them, right? A lot of people don't have full coverage. Park in one of these lots, you come back, your car Cars totally destroyed because some clown had an electric car that started on fire, you're not gonna be happy. So maybe think, don't park in the multi-story ones. Park flat on the ground where your odds are better that your car isn't gonna burn down because some stupid electric car starts on fire. Check it out. That is a Tesla rescue vehicle filling up with gasoline. <laughs> the Tesla roadside assisted vehicle, is it an electric vehicle? No, it is a gasoline powered van to rescue the electric cars that are stranded. And if you look closer, you can see it's a transit van. And they are filling up with gasoline, right? Yeah, so much for their electrification. They can't even trust their own vehicles to rescue them. Well, let's get a gas thing out there. It'll be reliable. We'll be able to save all the people who ran out of electricity. I guess they need something big like a van because they probably have uh, generators in there. And then they can recharge the batteries so that the Tesla's going far enough to get to the next station to charge it up. I mean, this is as funny as the biggest super station for charging a Tesla is in California, somewhere north of San Diego. And when they're real busy, they got to fire up a diesel generator hidden in a building in the back to generate enough electricity to recharge the Tesla cars at the supercharger because there's not enough electricity locally to do it. Those things use a lot of power, baby. One of those big stations like that, they use as much power as a village. So, yeah, electricity saving us all. What a load of horse manure. Hypocrisy reigns supreme. Well, if you wonder how EV sales are going, well, they're not going all that well, right? As I say, follow the money. For example, hybrids are hot sellers while EVs aren't. Prius hybrids in the United States only have a one week supply. That's all they got, right? But the Mustang E SUV has a three and a half month supply. They can't give them away. They've lowered the prices on them. They can't get rid of those clunkers. And here's what. A writer says, who I agree with entirely, hello, President Biden. Despite tax incentives, ridiculous mileage regulations, nonsensical rules in California, and what's left of your bully pulpit, the consumer has spoken loud and clear. They still don't want EVs. I tell people, look, see what it's like. 
right? Now, hybrid itself, just a plain old hybrid, it boosts gas mileage, right? You can't drive them all over the place on electricity. Alone. You're saving money in gas, right? Pay more for the car, you save money in gas. 30, 40% better gas mileage and stop and go with a hybrid than with a conventional gasoline engine, right? But if, let's say, you want to attempt to see what electric cars are like, you could get like a RAV4 prime hybrid, which can go 50 miles or so on electricity alone. Now, try to get a prime. You can't. You got to order them and wait because they're so popular, people are buying them. Now, to me, that makes sense because then you can try it out. You can say, okay, this thing can go 50 miles on electricity. Let's see how it pans out. Maybe your driving situation, that's fine. You say, that's great. Maybe the next car will get a fully electric car. But on the other hand, maybe you want a car, you can drive it in town, la, 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 electricity, but you want to take it on long trips too. Then, Hey, the RAV4 Prime would be fine because it goes over 500 miles with electricity and gasoline combined and you'll never be stranded because there's gas stations all over the place, right? So, this pushing the pure electric vehicles, it's showing what fools the politicians are as per usual. But if you do like I do and follow the money, the American consumer is saying, I don't want to buy this electric car. <laughs> Julian Guitar God says, my Toyota has a squeaky gas pedal. I got a 2022 Corolla hatchback. I bought it new. It makes a squeaking sound when I step on the gas pedal and sometimes will jolt when I hear that sound. It happens at stop signs, rolling stop parking, not from the brakes because it doesn't happen when you brake. It's always related to the gas pedal. Toyota said it's normal. Well, I think this is nonsense. What do you think? Okay, well, the clue is you said sometimes you get a jolt. You hear the squeak, you get a jolt, right? It's jolting. Now, first, you got to pinpoint where the noise is coming from. So, get a little stethoscope, listen around. Let's say it's coming from your actual accelerator pedal. Realize it's computer. You're basically stepping on a computer mouse. And then the little sensor there tells the computer how fast you want to go. So, it sends electricity to the system to open the throttle so far with an electric motor and so forth, right? If that is going bad, making a noise, and sometimes the car jolts, I'd say just have them put a new accelerator pedal, demand them to put a new one on because the sensor could be going bad. If it makes a noise and it doesn't send the right information, the car will jolt because it's getting confused by the data. It might be, you know, three quarters, and then all of a sudden it goes to zero, and then the car will jolt when it makes that noise. So, I would start by just saying, why don't you guys just change the accelerator pedal? I'm getting this jolt, and you should be able to talk them. Show them this video. Say, Scotty says, why don't you just replace the accelerator pedal and reprogram it? And if it is a problem there, that will definitely fix it. You know, if you hear that squeak coming from the accelerator pedal right there, where your foot above your foot, you step on a pedal above your foot is a little sensor. If it's coming from there, that's probably what it is. Blue Venom C says, I have a spark knock, I think, in the 2012 Scion. It's got 118,000 miles. It rattles at low RPM when you accelerate after more than 10 minutes of driving. No codes. It doesn't act weird. How do I get rid of the noise? All right. Well, if you hear a rattling when you accelerate then, Generally, that is something with the timing chain is off, and then your timing's off, and you'll get a little pinging and rattling, right? Have a guy like me check the timing chain to see if it's stretched. You want to pray that the chain is okay, but the tensioner is weak. And if the tensioner is weak, sometimes they stick. You could try some of my friends Bernie's ATS oil cleaner. You clean the oil, flush it out then put new oil in, and if that fixes it, great. It cleaned the carbon off of the little rod of the tensioner. If not, the timing chain's probably worn. I have a mechanic check it to see if the timing chain's worn. And if it is, that little bit of knock isn't really going to hurt anything. And when you find out the price it costs to change the timing chain, I've had customers driving years that way, and they rattle a little like that, and they don't care. They just keep driving. JC Brian M says, I got 2012 Nissan Murano. It revs slowly and has extremely slow acceleration. It's a 2012 Murano with 167,000 miles. If I floor it, it takes 20 seconds to reach 45 miles an hour. The revs don't go up. What do you think's wrong? Okay, it's a Murano. I can just about guarantee you that the stupid CVT transmission is going out. That's what happens to those things. They're crap. You're lucky that you got 167,000 miles out of the Murano CVT. Most of them break long before that. They're very weak transmissions. They're very poorly made vehicles. You're lucky you've gotten as much as you can. Now, theoretically, it could be other things, but take it to a mechanic like me. Have a scan tool put on, let them analyze the data and tell you what's going on. Tell them to pay specific concentration on the transmission data when he's road testing it. 
and odds are he's going to say, yeah, Scotty's right. It's that stupid CVT transmission that's going out. And then you got to decide, you want to spend tons of thousands on a, you know, 12 year old car that's got 167,000 miles, or is it time to go away? I would assume it's time to go away. Don't put a whole bunch of money into it. That's, that's the far end of their lifespans. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.